The spy on function is another way to create a Jasmine spy. Unlike the create spy function, the spy on function is used to spy on a method of an existing object. So we wouldn't use this so much for creating a spy to use in place of a concrete callback, like we saw with the create spy function, but instead we can take a dependency on a class that we are trying to test and create a spy for one of the dependency's functions. A spy created in this way will replace the function that it is spying on so that the old function will no longer be called. The spy on function is a global function and it's attached to the window object so you can use it anywhere. The basic usage for the spy on function is really quite simple. We call the function and the first argument is the object that has the method we want to fake and the second argument is the name of the method as a string. So let's take a look at this in a live test. So what I've done is I've created an object here that has two methods in it. The first one is save. Save takes no parameters and has no return value. Just does some work. Uh, you notice I commented out the center. That's because what it does is really not important. Then we've got get quantity, again taking no parameters but returning a 5. This is a very simple object. I put this object in the actual same file as our tests just to make it easy to demo what's going on. Of course you would never do this in a live system. So the first test we want to do is just do a basic implementation of spying on an existing function. So our test will be should spy on save. And here we're going to create a spy. And it's going to be that object. Remember our second parameter is the name of the function as a string. So I'll put in save inside of a string here. Now what I've got now is spy is a pointer to that function, but we've also replaced the actual implementation of the my object dot save function. So if I go ahead and call it, what I'm actually doing is calling the spy. Then I can just set my expectation that spy to have been called. Close up. Let's run this in the browser. And that's passing, no problem. So let's look at a, a more interesting example. This time we want to spy on get quantity. But you'll notice we got a problem. Get quantity actually returns a value. If we replace get quantity with an entirely different function, that it's not going to, by default, return anything. So that's not really going to work out. So what we do to handle this case is we still create the spy the same way. But now we can tell it what we want our, it to return. So I'm going to tell it to return 10 by calling the and return function. And now I can expect that my object I get quantity is equal to 10. Let's go ahead and run that in the browser. And that is Will's passing. Now notice if we hadn't replaced the function it would have been returning 5. Because we compared it to 10 we know that we're actually using whatever our return value is. We can set this value to anything that we want and as long as it matches here the test is going to pass. So we've seen how to call a spy and check that it got called. We've also seen how to force a return value out of a spy that we create. Another thing that we can do is provide an actual implementation for a spy. So let's assume we wanted to log out to the console whenever our system under test calls that method. That's quite simple to do. Let's go back to our code. And we'll create a test. Should spy on get quantity using a fake. And this time, create a spy, again using my object, and get quantity. I'm going to call and call fake. I'm going to pass it in a function, and this is the function that it's actually going to use as the implementation. I'm going to have it log out. And then I'm actually going to have it return the 20. And my expectation will reflect that to equal 20. And 
and close up. Let's go run that in the browser. And we have all three of our specs passing. And if we look at the console output, we can see that it is logging out, returning 20. So this gives us a way to put a custom implementation in whenever we create a spy on a function. In addition to providing our own fake implementations, either through the and return or the and call fake methods, we can also create a spy that still dispatches the call off to the real implementation. This is useful if the real implementation is useful for our test, but we still want to be able to monitor how many times the function was called or monitor the arguments that were passed. So let's take a look at how we do that. So this time it should spy. Now call through. Our spy is going to be created the same. And then we call the and call through function. This tells it to watch the function but still use the original implementation. So we can expect that my object get quantity is going to return five which is what the implement, original implementation was. We can also expect that the spy, again the handle that we created, that it's to have been called method, will assert that it actually got called and that the spy is tracking the call. And now four specs are passing. That new spec is indeed doing what we said it would do. Now the last thing we might want to do is cause our spy to throw an error so that we can test our exception handling in our class. This is also really easy with Jasmine spies. So we just go in here and we'll create a new test. And this time when we create our spy, We're going to call the and throw function. I'll throw a new error. And I'm going to create a quantity variable outside of a try catch block. And I'll put the call to that um, get quantity. inside of the try. And I'm going to catch the exception. And if we catch the exception, I'll set quantity to 100. And now we can expect the quantity is going to equal 100 because that method is now going to throw an exception even though the original implementation of get quantity did not. again and all five specs are passing even though we're actually throwing an exception it's getting caught and our quantity is getting set to 100. So we have seen how to use Jasmine to spy on methods of existing objects. This is a really common scenario for mocking in JavaScript and Jasmine makes it really easy to do with the spy on method.